thunder of jets in an open sky, a streak of gray, and a cheerful... A loop, a whirl, and a vertical climb, and once again, you'll know it's time for the adventures of... Rocky and Bullwinkle, and friends. Starring that supersonic speedster, Rocket J. Squirrel, with his pal, Bullwinkle the Moose, and a host of others. I'm coming as fast as I can. Wave to the people. Yay! Now what are you doing? Sign an autograph. The Steve John Smith. But your name is Bowwinkle. I know, but that's hard to spell. We're going to have a lot of fun. Come on and join us. Sure. There's always room for one more. Perry discovered the North Pole, Amundsen the South. However, neither of these esteemed explorers would have had much success finding Frostbite Falls, Minnesota in the dead of winter. Incidentally, that's it, that uh, steeple sticking up out of the snow. Now, with the town submerged under 30 or 40 feet of the soft white stuff, you might wonder how its inhabitants managed to dig their way out. Well, they don't. They rely completely on a snowplow. A snowplow with antlers. Spring will be a trifle late this fall. Bullwinkle, is that you up there? It's me, Granny Goodfoot. Keep talking, Granny, till I get zeroed in. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to be here today on this... Gotcha! Oh, <laughs> Bullwinkle, bless your mittens. And that's the way it went throughout the winter. The moose unearthed an average of 20 frostbitten frostbite fallers a day. Here, my boy, here's a ruble for your trouble. No, sir, not one red cent. With the arrival of spring, when the thermometer came all the way up to zero, the grateful town folk decided to reward their faithful snowplow. Let's get him a watch. Let's get him a bigger shovel. No, we must get him something worthy of his labor. So they merged their meager finances and ordered a statue of Fulton J.T. Figsby, the man who first discovered icicles. Why the white tie and tails, Bullwinkle? Haven't you heard, Doc? I'm to be giving a testimonial dinner. Yeah, but that's a week away. Besides, you're not fully dressed. Sure I am. I got on my fuchsia spats, my cerise hanky, my... Ooh, shame on you, Rocket J. Squirrel. You let me come out here without a shirt on. Practically stark naked in front of all these people. Now, it's common knowledge that the only laundry in Frostbite Falls is run by a former cookie cutter. All your shirts have holes in them. Yeah. Here's a gingerbread boy. There's a macaroon. Doggone it, I don't have one decent shirt to my... Oh, yes, I do. Ta-da! This one I've been saving for a special occasion. That's a shirt? Of course it's a shirt. It even has truffles. It also has a spot. Where? Alas, an infinitesimal dash of Tabasco sauce marred an otherwise ghastly piece of wearing apparel. Get some spot remover. Here you are. That's a rolled up newspaper. Well, I knew a feller who had a dog named Spot, and this was the dog gone to spot remover you ever did see. Not bothering to explain, Rocky proceeded to eradicate the stain. That's funny. A straight line funny? I mean the spot. It's spreading. Sure enough, the ink stain grew larger. You said it was Tabasco sauce. Well, from here it looked like it. It doesn't matter. I shall simply wrap it up thusly and send it to be laundered. To Carl, a cookie cutter? No, to Ed Fu Young's Chinese laundry. I hope you don't mind my asking, Bullwinkle, but exactly where is your shirt going? Well, Rock, when you're looking for a Chinese laundry, you don't look in Switzerland. Oh, don't tell me. Yup. One round trip ticket to Shanghai. Shanghai? China? They go to Shanghai in Ohio, but they don't do shirts as well. Uh, better make that two round trip tickets, please. See, Rock, does anybody ever wonder where we get all the money to gallivant around the world like we do? Never mind, Bullwinkle. The plane's leaving in an hour. Yeah. But I think it's all so improbable. Well, like the man said when he built a bigger building, we're off on another story and a tall one at that. <clears throat> Be with us next time for Hello, Orient, or that's some dandy-looking china you have there. Let's face it, any moose who spends the winter digging his neighbors out of the snow deserves a tribute. Three cheers for Bullwinkle! Oh, we have to give him more than that. Four cheers? They decided to honor him with a testimonial dinner. Unfortunately, although he had white tie and tails...
He lacked a shirt. Oh, no, I don't. I've been saving this one for years. Well, you didn't save it long enough. Yes, the shirt was not only gauche, but extremely bizarre. That's where I got the pattern for it. Out of Harper's Bazaar. It wasn't an easy shirt to get close to, but if you managed to get within three feet, you noticed a stain. Shucks, I'll have that out in a jiffy. Rocky didn't have a jiffy. Perhaps that's why the stain expanded. Shortly thereafter, a plane bearing Bullwinkle's shirt took off into the wild blue. Yonder. You're sending your shirt to a laundry, right? Right. To a Chinese laundry, right? Well, they're known for their smart work. However, the Chinese laundry he mailed it to was in Shanghai, China. Two tickets to Shanghai, please. I have to pick it up in order to be back here in time for the banquet. How come we didn't go with a shirt in the first place? You saw that shirt. Would you want to ride with it? Shanghai has a population of millions employed in various occupations, among which is the Mammoth Frap Toy Manufacturing Company, whose slogan, if it's a frap, it's great, is known the world over. Better not go into the laboratory, Mr. Frap. Professor Steinmetz left orders not to be disturbed. I'm an employer, Miss Bracegirdle. I can disturb anybody. Gently, Boris, gently. You don't got to tell me I got the hands of a sturgeon. That's surgeon, Boris. Don't call me Boris. My pseudonym is Steinmess. Steinmess, I want to see what you're working on. Go away. Can't you see I'm... Oh, hello, man who pays salary. I kiss your hand. The one you signed the checks with. Good grief. What are you cooking in that hibachi? His great new toy. I call it Mickey Moose Watch. You see, the little hand points to the hour. That's the oldest toy in the world. Steinmess, you're fired. <laughs> Out, out, both of you, out! Bullwinkle's shirt reached its destination on Monday. Our heroes, due to a monsoon over Santa Barbara, didn't get to Shanghai until Wednesday. There on the corner of Chow and Main, they spotted, uh, perhaps that's the wrong word, Ed Fu Young's Chinese laundry. Well, looks like we finally caught up with the little rascal. It sure does, and I can't wait to... That's odd. Your last word was two. That isn't odd, it's even. Look who's walking into the laundry. Sure enough, Steinmess, uh, uh, Boris and Natasha were also patronizing Ed Vu Young's. I'm a little too far away to tell, but that looks like our old friend's pick and pat. Yeah, I guess you're right. Come on. You can imagine our hero's surprise to discover that the only person in the laundry was a man behind the counter. Well, whoever came in here disappeared. Hello there, man behind the counter. I have come for my shirt. We're very busy. You present ticket, you get shirt. He doesn't have a ticket. You see, this entire transaction was perpetrated under some extraordinary circumstances. You like to break that down into English? And the little squirrel proceeded to recapitulate episodes one and two. But let us digress and enter a secret room behind the laundry. It is here that Boris and Natasha found refuge from prying eyes. What's going on? I'm afraid we won't know until our next chapter, tentatively entitled, Let's Blow Up New York, or We Bombed Them at the Palace. Well, at present, we're headquartering in Shanghai, China. Rocky and Bullwinkle, you may recall, are there to pick up Bullwinkle's shirt from a Chinese laundry. All this fuss just to have a clean shirt. Well, you wouldn't expect me to wear a dirty shirt to my testimonial dinner, would you? Don't answer that. Other familiar figures were also in the city, at the Frap Toy Manufacturing Company, to be specific. Professor Stein, miss, I hired you to create new toys for me. You hit fingernail right on the head, oh boss man. Well, you've been in this lab for six months. What have you got to show for it? 190 yen in take-home pay. But Boris had been working on something, a toy watch. Of course, this was as old as the hills in Hong Kong. Boris and Natasha were fired on the spot. Meanwhile... There it is, Bullwinkle, Ed Fu Young's Chinese laundry. They were about to enter when who should come along and precede them, but... You got the... Dirty linen to wash? No, but I got dirty plans. Boris went in, Natasha went in, Rocky went in. And Bullwinkle went in. Yes, but inside there was no sign of Boris and Natasha. One clean shirt to go. Without a ticket, it would take some haggling to get his shirt. That's when we peeked into a secret back room. Boris, for why we slave like white-collar workers just to make toy tiki talk? Shh, keep your accent down. Now, you mean to say you thought that was actually really toy watch? Here. 
Look at master plans. An intricate blueprint was spread before them. Now see here where fireplaces in the kitchen. That plan for house. For my old age, which was ten years ago. Here is master blueprint. And on the back of a bubblegum wrapper inscribed with the head of a rusty diaper pen was a detailed drawing of the toy watch. Yes, but what does watch do? You see miniature mushroom cloud over watch? No. Yes? No. Again, I got to say yes. This little tiki tack as you so quaintly put it on the bunch, is really a tiny atom bomb. With weapon like that, me and you can rule the world. But, darling, you never smuggled watch out of Shanghai. They got wanted posters of you all over town. There was even one in the secret room. Don't fear, dear. I'm not going to smuggle watch. I got confederate. You know Jefferson Davis? Look through peeps all. What do you see? I see shelves filled with shirt packages. Ah, but that small package on the second shelf contained more than a shirt. Now watch doorway. Accomplice comes in, says secret word, gets package, and meets us in U.S. of hay. Say, there are two auspicious characters out there. Never mind, just listen for secret words. Yeah, but those two... Listen for secret words. I tell you, Mr. Young, I have to be back in Frostbite Falls by Saturday night. Go see travel agent. But he needs his shirt. How things look? Confederate show up yet? No, just that moot. Secret words. Wait for secret words. Please, Mr. Young, you gotta let Bullwinkle have his shirt. Bullwinkle? That very ridiculous name. By the by, darling, what are secret words? I quote, perhaps you would rather I be John Philip Sousa? Perhaps you would rather I be John Philip Sousa? You like to repeat that for West Coast? I said... Never mind! Here is a secret package waiting for you. And with time definitely not on their hands, our boys left the shop. Well, be sure not to miss our next episode, Exploding Population, or Pull Yourself Together! In our last episode, Rocky had a dickens of a time trying to get Bullwinkle's shirt out of a Shanghai Chinese laundry. But we've come all the way from Minnesota for this shirt. I know, Calf, you come all the way from United Slates. No tiki, no shirty. The moose and the squirrel weren't the only ones with a problem. I agree, Boris. Toy watch that is miniature atom bomb is great weapon in hands of diabolical person. I think any one of those adjectives fit me. But how you got watch past sharp-eyed custom agents? I got a complex. And what the villainous scoundrel had done was to hide the watch in a shirt package with explicit instructions that the package was to be handed over to anyone who said... Perhaps you would rather I be John Philip Sousa. Those were the right words. You take a package and lamb out of here. Don't you worry, sir. We don't have much time left. Less time than they think, for the rude handling had started the mainspring, and the watch was set to go off when the hands reached 12. Meanwhile, in the secret back room... What can be keeping Confederate? Looks like him now. And through the peephole, she saw a huge sinister Chinese enter the shop and deliver the secret words. Perhaps you, Lala, I be John Philip Sluza. I know, care you, lad, la, lock. You got shirts to clean. You heard him give secret words, you give package. No can do. Packaging question just went out front door. I tried to tell you, Boris, but you... What do you mean, package went out front door? Hey, you. No interlope lady. Looky here, Snooky. Oh, boy. Accomplice I hired this big one. Boris, please to clam up. That's better. Now, Moose and Squirrel picked up package. Moose and Squirrel? And the startled fiend darted out of the laundry, followed closely by Natasha, One Ton Lee, and the proprietor of the laundry who had not been paid by Rocky or Bullwinkle. You go this way, I'll go that. You take the high road and you... Who's minding the store? Well, they split up and went in different directions, but Shanghai is a difficult city not to get lost in, as Rocky and Bullwinkle soon discovered. Hey, this doesn't look like the airport. You're right. It looks more like a river. Yes, they had wandered into Shanghai's notorious waterfront district. I got it. The China Clipper. At a time like this, who needs a haircut? There was no time to explain, for suddenly Boris, Natasha, and Wonton converged upon the area. This is Charlie Blue Leader. Any sign of moose and squirrel? Abel Baker Charlie here. No, I don't see them. Hokey smoke, it's our old nemesis. And there wasn't even any time to work out a pun, for the enemy was closing in. They got to be somewhere near here. Don't worry, Boris. We get shirt package back from them. Why, those sly devils? They're after my shirt. Yeah, but that doesn't make sense. Well, I could reword it. Quick, 
down this catwalk. Alas, because of the darkness, Rocky mistook a gangplank for a catwalk. What's more, they kept on going until they were in the hold of a broken down Chinese junk. I'll give you odds we're not in the Hilton Hotel. Shh, boy, I can't figure it out. We combed the entire city with fine tooth comb and still no sign of moose and squirrel. Well, you leave such to me. I catch them then, chop chop. Sounds like they're leaving. Sounds like we are, too. Yes, the junk slowly drifted out into the river. And who was at the helm? One Ton Lee, accompanied by you-know-who. Well, this is a turbulent situation, to say the least. Don't miss our next episode, Up the River, or Yangtze with a Laughing Face. This is Shanghai, China, a city that has given our heroes a few bad moments. For instance, they started out by going to Ed Fu Young's Chinese Laundry to pick up Bullwinkle's shirt. My name is Bullwinkle J. Moose, and I believe you have a package for me. Bullwinkle? That very silly name. Well, perhaps you would rather I be John Philip Sousa. And it just so happened that those words were to be spoken by an accomplice of Boris Badenov. Thus, instead of getting his shirt, Bullwinkle received another package <laughs> containing a mini miniature atom bomb in the form of a toy wristwatch. Well, when Boris found out about it... Quick, get me a can of cleanser. For why you want that, darling? We got to scour the CD. And in a matter of minutes, a gigantic search was launched throughout the greater Shanghai area. Bullwinkle, we gotta get our bearings. Let's escape later, Doc. I have to attend my testimonial dinner by Saturday night. Instead of the airport, they had stumbled into the river section. I got itty bitty hunch feeling that moose squirrel and shirt package are in vicinity. Capture seemed imminent until Rocky and Bullwinkle found refuge in the hold of a tottering junk. Where'd they find this thing? In a junkyard? <laughs> the junk pulled out into the river and it appeared as though our lads were free of their pursuers. Alas, that's when we took a look up on deck. You may rely on one ton. If those we chase are on liver, I find a plenty click. I was on liver once. Good for iron in the blood. Dispense with the levity, Natasha. Unless we get that toy watch back we are sunk they might be sunk anyway for the junk was listing to port that's better than muscatel meanwhile below decks see hey, rock notice anything strange about my shirt how can i we're in the dark and the shirt's in the package i know but it's ticking Indeed it was, and the bomb was set to go off at 12. Maybe the laundry gives free prizes away. I'll open it right after I climb out of the pool. Huh? Yes, the keel had split, and the river was coming in. Quick, Bullwinkle, up on deck. Boris, look. Grab him. Well, you just don't gallivant about the deck of a sinking junk and not lose your footing. Whoa! Seconds later, everyone was stroking for the mainland. Swim faster, Bullwinkle. Listen, if you think I'm going to get my shirt wet, you've got another thing coming. Oh, if only... Only he would get it wet, for it was five minutes to twelve and the bomb was already activating. Faster, Natasha, faster. How can I swim faster with you on my back? Well, one of us got to steer. All this time, one ton Lee had gotten into a motorized life raft and had reached dry land way before anyone else. He was waiting with open arms when Bullwinkle staggered out of the river and said, Perhaps you would rather I be John Philip Sousa. No, no, that was last time. This time you say, Oh, yeah. We made it! You make a one false move, you goners! It didn't take long for Burris to set up headquarters in a dilapidated shack. Boy, the budget on this show is awful. A rotting junk, a dilapidated shack. And you better believe old Poopsie Doopsie here, Moose. You will be in the same condition unless you tell what you did with the package. Good work, Bullwinkle. You hid the package. You're doing good I did, and you'll never find it. Yes, you've got to give Bullwinkle credit. Or do you? For he was sitting on it. And it was now one minute to twelve. It may be a short show next time, but join us anyway for The Bomb in the Cellar or Bullwinkle Lowers the Boom. We're in for an explosive ending to our story, for last time, aboard this Chinese junk, Rocky and Bullwinkle still had possession of the package containing the miniature atom bomb. And possession is nine-tenths of the law. The ticking sound bothered Rocky, but before he could investigate, the tide went out and the junk caved in. Tides in! Shirts out! Yes, the moose managed to keep the package dry, even when the junk sank and they were forced to swim to shore. Use the butterfly stroke, it's faster! You swim like a butterfly, I'll swim like a moose! And the bomb ticked on with zero hour minutes away. Fortunately, they made it safely to dry land. Or at least to dry land anyway. You guys are no love prisoner! Yes, Badenov's hatchet man was Johnny on the spot!
Name one pun, not Johnny. Uh, sorry. Uh, later in a shack outside of town. Tell me where you hid package or... Oh, come on now. You know us good guys don't scare easy. Well, us bad guys don't mind trying you out. Natasha, prepare the torture. Oh, yes, I neglected to mention that Bullwinkle was sitting on the package with detonation barely one minute away. Bullwinkle, your shirt isn't worth it. It's the dean of the thing, Rock. You mean principal. Yeah. Ready with torture, Boris. Roger will tell Natasha. Okay, start eating. And the willing Natasha dug into the most scrumptious chocolate marshmallow strawberry banana split hot fudge sundae you ever saw. Oh, mother of pearl. I can't stand it. I give up. I give up. Here, take the package. Aha. The bad guys win again. Come, Natasha. You two, Wonton. Together we rule world. What about us? You no longer interest me, Inky Pinky Squirrel. Hurry, we may get away over City Dump. A deadly silence settled over the shack. Finally, Rocky, tired and wan from the recent ordeal, spoke. Oh, there goes your shirt, Bullwinkle. And there goes the City Dump, Rock. Boy, they must have powerful garbage over there. The dump did go up, and for days it came down right on Shanghai. Boris and Natasha and One Ton not only received minor powder burns, but 60 days in jail for disregarding the city anti-litter law. Hey, food not bad here. You ought to try number two dinner. As for Rocky and Bullwinkle, they straightened everything out with the authorities. All right, we'll let you go back to floss bite floors on one condition. You name it. Promise to send shirts to Malik and Laundries. They do good job, too. With but hours remaining, our heroes boarded a jet and streaked for home, hoping they would arrive in time for the dinner honoring Bullwinkle. You rush home and change into your white tie and tails, Bullwinkle. I'll stall the banquet. It's no use, Rock. I don't have a clean shirt, and I won't appear in front of that crowd ill-fitted, so to speak. Oh, for goodness sake, run on home. I'll get a shirt for you. Well, on a Saturday night in Frostbite Falls, there wasn't a clean shirt to be found. Not even a dirty one. Ah, but the mind of a flying squirrel is a resourceful one. For five bucks, okay? You got a deal, Rocky. Ten minutes later, after a heart-rending introduction... And so you see, friends, if it hadn't been for my little pal, Rocky, I might be the most embarrassed moose in the world. Yes, sir, that little guy would give you the shirt off his back. That is, if you were a size three. This episode is over, but the very best of my collection is banned on YouTube. To see what you have been missing, go to archive.org and search for Gyro... Screw loose, and I'll see you there.